Hello, we're live. Hello, hi Rebecca, welcome, you're the first one. Welcome everyone. Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. So we're just waiting a few minutes for our tour guide to join us. But I wanna say a huge thank you everyone for joining Cooper Hewitt's first ever Instagram Live design studio tour. Um, so while we're waiting for our tour guide to join, I'll briefly introduce myself. My name is Megan Mahaffey. I'm an educator at Cooper Hewitt and I am coming to you live today for a special behind the scenes tour of a, a world-renowned architecture firm and a 2020 National Design Award winner for architecture, Snowheda. Uh, so we'll just, we're waiting a few, a few seconds here for Craig Dykers, our tour guide, to join. Let's give him a few seconds uh, to log in here. Um, Craig is the founding partner of Snowheda. Um, he's one of the founding partners of Snowheda and he currently leads the New York office with the other, um, with the other partners. Oh, and I think here he is. Hello. <laughs> so this October is uh, National Design Month, Design Month at, uh, at Cooper Hewitt. Good. And oh, Greg, hello. Welcome. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Hi, good to see you. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, going very well, thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> yes. Great. Well, Craig, thank you so much for joining us. I think we can we can get started today. Um, this is our first ever Instagram Live virtual studio tour. Um, we're so honored to be joined by you, Craig, um, one of the founding partners of Snowheda. And congratulations again for your win this year, the 2020 National Design Award winner for architecture. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> So if you just joined, hi everyone, I'm Megan Mahaffey. I'm an educator at Cooper Hewitt, joined by the imperable Craig, uh, Craig Dykers from Snowheda. Um, and I, I wanna quickly say a huge thank you to Target who has made this all possible. We're doing a whole month of virtual programs this October in celebration of our National Design Award winners like Craig. Um, so. Thank you, Target, and thanks to all the viewers for tuning in today. Um, so, Craig, we're going to go on a virtual tour today. Shall we get started? Sure, that's great. And I'll give a thank you to Kelly Tigera, who's holding the camera for me so steadily. So. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see her, though. She's just over there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, behind the scenes. <laughs> but we're, uh, we're together here in the studio, uh, six feet apart. And uh, um, we, uh, we're just going to take a, a little walk through. I want to talk a bit about our process. I won't go through a specific project from start to end, although we will begin a little bit that way, but rather show you different components of the process as we move uh, through the studio. Uh, and some of the projects you will have been familiar with and others might be a little bit of a mystery. Um, the project behind me here is uh, the Willamette Falls uh, Riverwalk project that we have I've been working with for a number of years. And it's a, uh, a quite large project. It has to do primarily with landscape development and, and habitat restoration uh, at, uh, in, a, in a waterfall that's uh, just near Oregon City. It's the second largest waterfall by volume in the US behind the Niagara Falls. And you can see a bit of that behind me here. And this uh, wall sort of shows you a lot of the different types of things that we might do. Uh, we register and walk through the site, we get to know it very well, we make hand sketches, we take photographs, we work with computers, but most importantly we work with a lot of models. And you can see some of them spread out here, all different types. Some are extremely conceptual, uh, for example, maybe this one, which is just like this crack with things going through it, a landscape artifact. Uh, some are like a bit fun and interesting, as if a kind of log that we created. Uh, a kind of a log with a bench uh, attached to it. Um, those are, are, are some of the features that you see here. And other portions are more detailed. This is a very intense model showing all the contours of the site uh, in a very, very detailed way. Some um, conceptual thinking and some views of how we might imagine this future. But most importantly is this uh, diagram here on, at the very end of all of these drawings that 
can see now. And that's a, a really amazing uh, work that um, our landscape architects, uh, uh, biologists and botanists and, and some of the architects join together to create. And what it shows is the cycle of life throughout the year of flora and fauna, including human activity. And the idea is, and you can see this sort of, it goes uh, from the beginning of the year down at the bottom, it says January, all the way to December. And we look at where humans are the most active, where uh, other types of animals and fish, uh, for example, and birds are also using the site. And we try to cal create a calendar for the year where these worlds can coexist. And that was what it was an attempt to make here. So it's a, a rather fascinating uh, aspect of this project and something that we try to carry through uh, on all of our work. But this is a rather intense version. What you can see here is our big meeting room. Um, we actually try to use this as a meeting room whenever we can. That <laughs> you can see uh, more than one project can be in here. So we, don't, we have a few smaller meeting rooms, but as much as possible, we try to activate the space with different projects. Yeah. Um, we use the tables in different ways. We also meet sometimes here. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. And then uh, just to on my left is the kitchen. Uh, where we would normally have our, our food being prepared and so on. Obviously, it's quiet. It's right by the pool. Um, these are some, uh, some drawings and sketches uh, that, uh, and models that I thought would be interesting. It's a big table, so we'll move rather quick. Uh, most of these are, are sketches I've made because they were easy for me to get out of the drawers to, to show you today. Uh, there are some things like plans for for Times Square. This is Times Square and our, some of our early studies on how they might work and plan with people in, in different areas and where how we might secure it. Uh, and actually behind me is uh, are the uh, tables and chairs that we co-created with Vesta Furniture uh, that are in Times Square. And you can see one of the little prototype models of the chair that you just see right there. Wow, so, cool. Yeah, nice little, um, little ensemble. And then here you can see, for example, some studies on San Francisco Museum of Modern, Modern Art, SFMOMA. When we started the project at SFMOMA from an urban perspective, we wanted the building to create a kind of bowl, which you can see in this very early study model. It, it's a, the roof swoops down, and it, it was designed this way to allow sunlight to access the sculpture gardens and other portions of the site around the museum, and that's where this shape came from. It followed the sun. But this was a very poor design functionally for the upper levels, very inefficient. So we looked at how we could recreate the shape without it making an actual swoop like this. And here you can see uh, what we did to resolve that. Um, this was a very early conceptual model. You can see in elevation, it's a rectangle. But if you're down low, and I'll, I'll recreate that for you for the camera, Maybe you can see here, as you look across it from below, you get the same swoop that you would have gotten yeah. with, with this model. So it, it's a simpler form, but it gives you the same quality. And that's how we began to develop the form. And then, furthermore, if you're familiar with the Museum of Modern Art, Francisco, the facade is very unusual. And this was an early conceptual model, just made out of cardboard stacked on top, cut in an unusual way, and it gives this ripple effect that actually is what the final building, uh, and here's a model of some of the final services. Uh, this represents uh, where we moved. So very early and uh, quite late. Our, these were about three years apart. Wow. Uh, these models. Um, <laughs> and we looked inside the building as well. Here's a, a model of the interior with the Richard Serra sculpture. And so we make big models as well as small models. Yeah. That's fantastic. So where where would you get inspiration for a structure like this that's uh, that's so unusual? Does it come from the, the people that are going to use the space, the environment that it's in? I, I would say all of the above. Um, we're <laughs> struck by certain characteristics we learn as we talk to people. We do a lot of research by going there. We don't just research by going online and grabbing pictures. We like to talk to people. We went to the museum, interviewed people before we began the process of design. We walked the streets of the city. We experienced the maritime climate in San Francisco, which is quite unique. And of course, 
one thing that really stands out in people's minds is the fog of San Francisco. It rolls through the city and slices San Francisco in sections. It almost moves like a wall across the city. And so that struck us as rather beautiful. And so some of these early studies were trying to recreate that quality as if the fog had moved across the building. Uh, and so that when you're in this place, it would feel natural to its environment. And that's how we came up with those kinds of ideas. And then the models are always just tests. Uh, the swoopy shape, which I was referring to earlier, as I say, it had to do with the sun. So it follows the, the shape of the sun as it passes over the site to allow sunlight onto the uh, ground below. Wow. Yeah, and, and when designing a museum, of course, you need to consider the safety of the objects inside it too. So how fascinating. I can, t I can see the, the inspiration from the fog coming through. <laughs> yes, how? it's true because a museum can't have a lot of windows into the galleries. So right. you have to create another <laughs> sort of character. Here you can see uh, another model where we're showing some of the galleries uh, and, and how you move up and down. And, you know. So I'll move along here and just show you some other things. Yeah. Uh, this is just a nice little sketch of a tower we made once. It was never built, but um, it was a residential tower. It had a very beautiful quality. A number of towers you can see on the table here. Um, and quite a lot of hand sketches. So we, you'll see we do hand sketches as well as uh, digital uh, work. Um, here's some hand sketches for something that went on to be the Ryerson Student Learning Center in Toronto. Um, this is the original concept model and this is the final design. So there's about another I'd say two years between wow. these two and you can see in some of the early sketches uh, how the qualities were sort of developed in tandem with one another. Um, so Craig, I, I have a question. How, first of all, what material are those prototypes made out of? And, oh. and how many would you say you make for, for a project? Um, well, I would say we're scavengers. We use any <laughs> material we can get our hands on. So this happens to be just some leftover junk wood that was in the model shop. Uh, this is a 3D print. Uh, some of these are made of wood uh, or plaster. Some are 3D uh, printed. This one is just packed out of foam and then glued. These are, um, you know, the yellow stickies that you write a note to someone on and you Post-it put... notes, yeah. yeah. These are post-it notes, just cut and then just stuck on. So wow. we're just moving fast. We move as fast as we possibly can. Sure, yeah. I wanted to show you some fun things as well. These are some of my private sketches, so they're not architectural per se, although some of them relate to architecture. So. These are sketches I made uh, while in Rome. This is uh, a sketch I made of the of the Colosseum, and there 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 are different layers of how quickly it took to make the sketch. So this was the the final sketch. This is the middle sketch, and here's the first sketch. So all of these. Well, actually, the first sketch uh, was a, a drawing that was made blind. And then, uh, oh wow! Oh, I you know seeing this this all laid out, you can really see the your process, the iteration here, the difference between that first blind sketch and this final one is, is yeah. fascinating. Wow. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. What, um, what kind of pen did you use for those sketch? I, you'll notice for me, I use blue pen a lot. Yeah. And I'm also a scavenger for pens, so I'm, I'm picking up any kind of pen <laughs> I can grab a hold of, any kind of piece of paper I can find. I don't, personally, I don't like to have a notebook. I just like to draw and do stuff and throw it around and just, I don't care. Yeah. I just make it and it just gets spread out. Um, and right now I have a little um, Pentel pen, it's always blue, almost always blue. blue, although sometimes I can't find one. So this little sketch is made by, with black ink. It was actually a sketch we made for one of our staff who just had a baby. And so um, uh, in, the, in the office they organized a blanket for the baby and all of us sent in sketches for the blanket. And this was my little sketch among many oh, others. Oh, wonderful. That's yeah. wonderful. And there's a little dog I sketched, so. Uh, and here's, here's, I, there's a, sometimes some humor in the sketches. This is the Pope trying to figure out what toilet he should be using. <laughs> uh, wow, it really seems like you get inspiration from everywhere. Oh, look at that. <laughs> just a guy I saw in the street. Wow. And, uh, and some of them are about details, very small things. I found an old the old set of drawings from Alexandria Library in 1989. 
uh, and these are the original prints. Um, the original drawings are much larger. And here's something nice to show you. Uh, this is the, the exterior wall of the Alexandria Library in the very, very first sketch. At this time, there were no computers, so we had to do this by hand with collage. And you can see that. that Wait, uh, so can we, zoom can we zoom into that the, a little closer again? Like, so that's all, that's all hand drawn individual little pieces there. And collage. It's both and collage and, and hand collage and hand drawn partly. The, the drawings here are all hand drawn. So those are, uh, those are made without computers. The computers didn't um, really weren't used at this time. But one thing I wanted to share with you is I found my old uh, copy of the Rosetta Stone that I bought in a museum. And this wall was, uh, was inspired by the Rosetta Stone. So you can see the relationship there. Wow. That's and then over here is something fun. I pulled this out because it's, it's at the Cooper Hewitt. So we've been working with John Gray uh, for an exhibition, which you can see some of the sketches here and a little model we made. It will be in the Cooper Hewitt. Oh, it was supposed to, yeah, it was supposed to have already opened, but COVID uh, came upon us and it's been delayed. And I think it will be uh, opening either sometime early in the uh, next year. That's yeah. a little exhibit design we made. So, so this, this is a design for an exhibition. Yes, um, for, it, that's right. So it's not our work. We're just supporting John Gray, who's from Ghetto Gastro, and Smithsonian to help lay out the exhibition design. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. But it looks I wanted like to show you one other thing real quick before we move along that I really think is nice to see. Uh, we made, made a museum for natural science in Guadalajara in Mexico. And um, when we talked about it, this was one of the first sketches, if not the first sketch that we created for that project. We didn't know what it was. It was just, oh, let's something cutting through and we could feel the energy of nature carving out something. It's, it, it didn't mean a lot. And then, and then um, I mean, at least it didn't mean a lot functionally. And then we created this little model from that which was made in the shop. And it was just a kind of conceptual thing, but you can feel as if the water had carved through a, a big block and uh, some funny, strange things happening that were just, you know, for fun, really. We yeah. try to have fun. And uh, that uh, eventually became uh, this. Uh, so it became more complex. Um, again, uh, probably, well, in this case, a shorter period of time between these two, maybe uh, a year. From, to go from here to there. Yeah, uh, and, um, you can see some of the themes are, are kind of strung through along through the, through the different iterations. Yeah, especially when you, you hold that up there. Yeah, wow. So I thought that was fun to show. And, yeah. and one other thing I wanted to show is this is another project we're working on right now. This isn't gonna be built, but somebody had seen that and they were inspired to make this on a different project. So there were certain things that, that, that were uh, relevant to them. So they picked this up and, and then made this. So it was wow. an inspiration. That is the, the highest compliment, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll just finish real quick because uh, I know we want to talk about other things in the yeah. office, but I did want to show you some fun things here. Um, I was on the uh, Cooper Hewitt uh, National Design Award uh, high school call the other day. Uh, you know, when we talked to Lincoln High School in San Francisco, and I, I, I made this little sketch during that, uh, during that workshop that we had. So I'm planning to send it to the high school. Uh, hopefully they can get it soon. That's it fantastic. was a lot, of, a lot of fun to work on. And something else happened during that workshop. We, we, brain, we were brainstorming with the, with the students. And um, during that brainstorming process, you created a 3D. I don't know if you still have that. The 3D. I don't, but I can recreate it in all of two seconds. <laughs> This was a fascinating technique um, that, yeah. that you used, yeah. So we, I just took a sheet of paper that means nothing much to anybody, and then I smashed it up into a little ball, and then I unfolded it, and suddenly it had structure and shape. So that became the project. So if I hold it up, can you see the model and the paper? Wow. You can see, yeah, you can see the the points that have come through from yeah. just the shape of the paper. Yeah. Wow. Or you can turn it over and it's another building. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
that's fantastic. And, um, if we think about the, the brainstorming and prototyping process of getting ideas and, um, you know, they're really so intertwined. Yes. Yeah. We make things all the time. We're moving. I, I, I like it. The problem is, and we can talk more about this in a moment, of course, being separated as we are, it's harder to be energized from each other in the room. Yeah. So we're trying to find other ways to build that energy back. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So I'll just move over here real quick. These are more projects. Uh, here's a crazy thing that, um, as we walk past it. Um, it's something I'm trying to get built right now. It's a um, helium balloons holding up a canvas. Wow. So you get a, a portable room just by filling up the balloons. Um, so it's a kind of a, a, a place for, for an event of some kind. It That's so creative. Fun. It reminds me of the, yeah, the movie Up <laughs> where he floats away. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And uh, over here, this is real nice to look at. Um, these are some benches, or rather stools, that we designed. And there's several things that I love about them. They're very similar to the alto stool, so that they stack uh, in the traditional way. You can see how they stack. I'll stack yeah. one of them now. So for example, if you want to store them, you just stack them. And you can stack them all the way up like the alto chair. But the difference is that the shape is just bizarre. And even though we've drawn it, and I've seen this stool a million times, I could, if I close my eyes, I couldn't tell you what the shape actually is. <laughs> and what's nice is that they are modular. So even though you think modules have to be square, they don't. So if you come up closer, Kelly, I'll show you that you can just put these together in wow. different ways. You see how they fit together? Or you can, you can just change it to another to another edge. Uh, you can take another one and put it in over here, maybe like that. And so they, every time you put it together, it makes a different shape. So, they're, they're, so that they're they're never it's modular but never repetitive. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. And that shape was hard to make. So here's some of the early sketches, and you can see we had to make. Like even by hand, but without the computer, how that shape can be stacked because it's not obvious. Many we failed many times before we got just the right shape. Sure. Yeah. So that yeah, that process must have taken some time to ensure such an organic-looking shape is able to be produced. Yeah, we we had a little group of people, and one person who's really good at making models and testing things. So. Uh, you know, if we were to, you know, you can draw it, but you really need to test it and yeah. prototype it. Yeah, absolutely. And this is interesting because, you know, Snowhead is a, a, an architecture firm, of course, but it seems like you and your team really consider not just the building, but the environment and, you know, how people are going to interact in the building and the whole structure um, and system that, that you create. Yeah, that's true. We're about 30% landscape architects, roughly, and we're about 10% interior architects, and then we have product designers and graphic designers in the studio, so we are a collective of different interests. Wow, oh, that's great. Well, this has been, um, what a wonderful tour. Is there anything else there that, um, in the last few minutes, that you may show? Oh. How much time do we have left? We have just about five minutes left. Well, I'm just going to walk slowly to the model shop, and we'll end there. Oh, and take great. Some, we can we can take questions while we're uh, while we're walking. This is the the studio great. as it is now. We put up some cardboard dividers so that uh, during the pandemic uh, we can uh, suitably separate people. Uh, we have a check-in system so that uh, as you come to the studio, you have to go through a health check and so on. And we limit the amount, the capacity. Of the uh, of the office, so that uh, we won't be fully occupied. Although, actually, our space is rather large, and by law, we could bring the entire studio in here and still meet the health code. But we've decided to to not do that. So we're only a, we're allowing less in than 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 we are legally allowed. So, um, oh, here's a fun prototype. Uh, this is we work with a group called Pencil. These are high school students who made this little model here. Uh, a lot of people in the studio volunteer their time to work with these high school students out in uh, in East Brooklyn, uh, Brownsville area, roughly. Oh, I think uh, yeah, I can't remember the exact community wow. where the high school is in, um, but it's it's their students come and made this, and uh, I'm going to just end here.
Wow, we're great. So while we're while we're we got a lot of questions, we've got a few questions here. Um, many asking what advice you have for for high school students and and early career professionals on entering the profession, especially now. Did, did you, know. you say high school students? High high school students, college students, and um, um, young professionals. What? Well, when I was in high school, I didn't know I wanted to be an architect, but I had a natural inclination to draw. I, like many young kids, was, you know, getting into trouble wherever I could. So, I, you know, I was, I was uh, making cartoons and strange things uh, on, you know, on my, my, my book covers, uh, having, uh, making cards. You know, I just love to draw. And uh, I loved architecture also, just naturally, because it's everywhere. So I spent a lot of time looking at buildings and, and learning about them. And I went to the library a lot. Uh, in terms of uh, college level, um, it depends on where you're going to school. But when I was at university, because I didn't start as an architect, I spent a lot of time understanding and learning from other colleges before I became an, uh, enrolled in architecture. And even after I was enrolled in the architecture school, I still kept going back to the other colleges. I would spend study over in the astronomy department or I would eat my lunch over in the, uh, at the ballet school, or I would go over to the uh, physics department and walk down the hall and just be amazed at what they were doing. So wow. broadening one's perspective is extremely important. And I spent a lot of time out just socializing and having friends, you know, making sure that I wasn't studying all the time because architecture is about life. And if you can't have a life, it's gonna be very hard to design for it. Wow. that's. That's beautiful. I agree. <laughs> so where are we now? The model shop. Yeah. Um, there's, there's the, some few models. There's a, so we're in a, we're in a 20, 30, 25, 30 story bill something like that. I don't remember how many floors, but it's nearly, it's a, it's a skyscraper and we're on the 10th floor and we're the, really the only uh, setup like this in the whole building. So we had to negotiate to get a model shop in here. We had to get a special ventilation to go out uh, to, to be filtering air outside. We had to get um, uh, vibration controls under all the heavy equipment. There's a lot of heavy equipment in here. Um, uh, a table saw, um, drills, jigsaws, sanders, everything, uh, hammers, uh, all sorts of things. And we work with wood and, and work with a uh, three-dimensional uh, printer as well as uh, the more traditional type of uh, um, laser cutting uh, that you're used to. And we do things with our hands. and. We yeah. try to use it as much as possible. That's great. Yeah, like it sounds like you are a very hands-on firm. So what a what a what a great luxury to have this space right there in your office. It is. We often say that if you're only thinking with your mind or your brain, you're not really thinking. You also need to think with your whole body. So wow. moving around, doing things, making things, in addition to using your mind creates a more complete uh, process. Now, even people I know that who are paralyzed or not able to move, they say those people even imagine in their heads that they're moving. Um, so uh, it's an interesting condition of, of, hu of human uh, life. Yeah, wow. Well, Craig, thank you so much for welcoming us virtually into your, uh, um, into your studio today. And before, before we sign off, um, I wanted to just see if we could uh, talk a little bit about collaboration in the virtual world and now that you know everything is zoom meetings and instagram live how how are you and your team collaborating through the screen yeah there of course we're trying to be as safe as possible so people are mainly working at home um we use different techniques that are technologically available that most people are using now things like a miro board we use a slack channel for informal discussions um, we send things around by email. Sometimes, because you see the number of hand drawings up there, we'll even draw something by hand and just hold it up and, <laughs> and look at it. Uh, and then we try, we've had a couple of meetings here in the studio uh, that were controlled, but we were able to use the space as best we can. Um, there's a lot of talking, and the biggest issue in my mind is, is, not, is not burning people out. Um, the technology means that uh, the separation of people means that in a studio space, I might walk over to somebody or they might walk over to me and just ask me a question. Hey, right. what about this and this and this? And there'd be an answer. 
Whereas when we're separated, we have to like set up a Zoom call. We have to make an appointment. We have to, you know, fill in the space, make sure that it's possible. And, you know, that one question suddenly takes, you know, 30 minutes, which have only taken three. So we're trying to streamline that. We're trying to give people as much breaks as possible. It's, it's tough. Um, but I would say so far we've been successful. The people, people in the studio are extremely creative. So they, they found ways to collaborate. And plus, we're built on the spirit of collaboration. So it was easier, I think, for people to do uh, as opposed to some other types of studios that are more uh, either hierarchical or siloed. So yeah. um, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a frame of mind, I would say. Absolutely. Wow. Well, with that, I think, you know, you've got, you, we've, we've heard some great things, some great stories. Thank you for, uh, for welcoming us again. Um, and congratulations on winning the 2020 National Design Award for Architecture. Um, we're also inspired by you and your and Snowheada's work. And to our viewers, thank you for joining us. And I hope you will all tune in to um, our huge slew of, of, a, of, a, of programs coming up at Cooper Hewitt. You can find more information about all of them at cooperhewitt.org slash NDM. All right. Thank, thank you. Guys. Yep. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.